So we've gotten our many to many relationships set up in our database. We've modeled the relationships. Now we need to start figuring out how we are going to actually crud this data. And we'll go ahead and we'll just start with read because it's probably the easiest. We have a join table right here. And the way that we fetch join tables is not really going to be that much different. And we'll just talk in a little bit of pseudocode just to not confuse people that much. First things first is we're going to get the user from the claims. When the user sends the claims, we're going to reach into the claims. We're going to get the user name. And with that user name, we can find all of the users associated with the user ID and the stock ID. And when we find the user, we will find all of the users associated with that stock. Unfortunately, though, our data is going to be returned as a join table. So it's going to look a lot like this. We can't really do much with it. Fortunately for us, we can use NAD Framework Core to find all of the stock data associated with the stock ID. So essentially, we're going to get all of the users with their stocks, and then we're going to transform all the data into actual stock. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code, and let's do some coding. Okay, so we are inside of VS Code, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my controllers file, and I'm going to make a brand new controller for our portfolio. Okay, so first things first, as always, we need to go into here, we're gonna bring in our controller base, and we are going to set up the API endpoints. So um, this is the way that I do it, but feel free to do it any way that you like. So I'm gonna say portfolio, and I'm going to give this API controller attribute. All right, so we're gonna need a couple things. So Let's go ahead, bring in our constructor. We need the user manager. And I'm gonna say app user. And I'm gonna call this user manager. Then I'm gonna go down here just to bring it down because we're gonna have a lot. And I'm going to bring in the stock repository because we're gonna have to bring in some stocks, of course. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead, control dot that. So next thing that I'm gonna do is do my private read only's. So I stock repository, or actually let's make sure they're in order. Let's make it look good. So user manager, say app user, and go ahead and sign this underscore user manager. Then we're gonna do the same exact thing for the stock repository. Say read only, I stock repository, it's equal to stock repo. Okay, then go down here going to say set up the user manager user manager and stock repo it's equal to stock repo okay so we're looking good on our constructors we don't really need we don't really need anything else and we're going to make our portfolio repository here in a second so we'll worry about that later and i'm going to say this is going to be a git we're reading and we're going to need to authorize so Whenever you have authorize, it's going to check the claim and any endpoint that requires a claim, you're definitely going to need authorize, but feel free to set the authorization however you want. So I can say I action result. So now we're going to say get user, I'm gonna call this get user portfolio. And we actually don't need to pass in anything because maybe later if you want to customize it, but the only thing that we need to worry about right now is going to be our user claim. So I'm gonna say uh, user dot get user name, just like that. And we don't have it because we need to make it, but let me explain what this is. This is actually the user and it's being inherited from the controller base. So whenever you actually utilize an endpoint, an HTTP context is going to be created. And this user object is going to allow you to reach in and grab everything associated with the user and the claims, which is another great part. So just if you ever see this, just realize you're probably going to be searching for claims or within the HTTP context. And we need to create an extension. So if you don't have an extension folder already, that may be left over. So I'll just go ahead, get rid of it and uh, re-add it. So go into your API folder and we are going to create a new folder and we're going to add some extensions. And 
uh, claims extensions are very common. So I'm going to call this claims extensions because if you're working on this project after this, you're going to be use, utilizing claim extensions a lot. So it's probably best just to make their own uh, class. And we're gonna add static and we're also going to add static string. We're going to call this what we just named it before, get username. And we're going to pass in you're not actually passing in. This is the actual type that it's going to be attached to, and it's going to be of type claims principle. So claims principle was brought in. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to reach into the claims through this user object that we have. We're gonna say claims, I want to say, there's already methods to reach into the claims that's already pre-built for you, which is very nice. X, going to say type, and this is just kind of gibberish. And it's not going to make a lot of sense because this is just how you reach into claims. It's kind of got a lot of weird verbiage or a lot of weird words, but that's just kind of how you do it. So we're going to go into here. I'm going to type in HTTP. And this is literally just a random string from probably like 2008. And it's going to say XML soap and dot org slash WS. Uh, WS, not WA, 2005, 05, identity, claims, given, name, with two Ns. And I will type this down below and put it down in the description uh, so you don't have to type it in to make sure that it is the way that you want. But it's actually not HTTPS, uh, it's actually HTTP. So that was one error. And let me just check really quick to make sure that it is correct so i'll leave that down in the description but that is it right there it is kind of a little bit of gibberish <laughs> kind of strange looking but this is how we reach into the claims where do we actually get these claims we get the claims from our token so if you go inside of our token service we added the email in the username and that's actually what we're reaching into when we actually create the token we're going to reach into that token we're going to uh, not the actual token itself, but the HTTP context and the claims that were given to us through the token. So that is what's going on. But enough chit chat. Let's go back in here. We're going to go back into our controller and bring in our API extensions. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to get the user. And now that we have the username, we can just quickly use the user manager in order to find the username. And there's already a method attached to it called find by uh name async not find by email so find by name or you could find by the email if you want to if you want to search through the claim the email is actually in there if you want to but i'm going to do username so the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the user portfolio and the way that we're going to find the user portfolio is we are going to reach into the database and we are going to pull out all records that are associated with the given user that is logged in with the data that we got from the claims. And then we're going to return all of these stocks that are associated with that user. How do we do that? Well, first things first is we need to go ahead, we need to create an interface. I'm going to call this iPortfolio repository. And we're going to add a method in here that's going to be task. It's going to be a list doc. And we are going to call it get user portfolio. And we're going to pass in an app user and we'll give it the name user. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to actually implement it. So go into our repository folder and we're going to create the iPortfolio repository. Pretty simple. Go ahead, implement our interface. So iPortfolio repository. And then we're going to go ahead, we are going to implement it. Of course, we're going because it's a repository, we're gonna to have to bring in our application DB context. So go into here, just go ahead, bring that in. I think my caps lock is on. So application DB context, call this, you guessed it, context. Do our privates, our private read onlys, I should say, <laughs> application DB context. So application DB context in context. Then here, of course, you guessed it. No surprises here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building this method. First thing is return. Now that we have the context, we're just going to filter all of the portfolios by the user. So we're gonna say you, and we're going to return everything. But 
even though that we're getting back all of this data, we don't want the user data. All that we want is the stock data. So all that we're going to do is we're going to go down here. And also I need to make sure that this is async so I don't forget. And we're going to go up here and this is where we are going to transform the data. And all that a select is, is a map. So if you come from the world of JavaScript, a select statement is basically going to iterate over it, apply these changes to it, and then return a new data structure. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go stock, say stock ID, and then this is pretty much the blueprint for how we're actually going to return it. So stock, and we're going to pass in the symbol, and we need to return it exactly like the stock type. So company name is equal to stock, stock, company name, and purchase is equal to stock, stock, dot purchase. Get some good practice in last div is equal to stock, stock, last div. And industry is equal to stock, dot stock, industry. Then lastly, we have our market cap. So market cap is equal to stock, stock dot market cap. And of course we need to go ahead and execute this. And we're going to say to list async. And we can't forget our await. So we need to, of course, await this because it's async. So now that we've gotten this built, let's go ahead, let's go back and bring in our portfolio repository. So I'm gonna say uh, portfolio repository, and we'll call this portfolio repo then we're going to bring it in up here so private read only i uh, portfolio repo is equal to portfolio repo and of course we can't forget we need to add the portfolio repo and assign this to the actual parameter passed in Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is we need to bring in the portfolio repository, execute our method, and we will good to be good to go after this. So go ahead, pass in the app user, and we're going to return the user portfolio. And one thing we need to do before anything else is we need to add the dependency injection before we forget. So go inside of your program.cs file. We're going to copy this, bring it down. And we're going to bring in our iPortfolio service. So iPortfolio service or iPortfolio repository and bring in your portfolio repository. Go ahead, make sure to rerun it. And in the meantime, before we do anything else, we need to go inside of our database and actually create, manually create a portfolio because we don't actually have one yet. So first thing, go to your stock database, add a stock get the stock ID of the stock that you want to add to your portfolio, then go to your users. Uh, once you're inside the users, you need to make sure that first thing, you, there has to be a user in there. So if you don't have one already, just go ahead and create one and then go to the portfolios and then go to edit the top 1000 or top 200 rows. If you don't, if you didn't see that edit top 200 rows, so it's going to be right there. Then we're going to go make sure you delete the null and then go inside of the app user Go ahead, paste that. And then we're going to paste the stock ID of the one that we want to associate it with. And if you did everything correctly and it's pasted in there as a string, and if this is a uh, integer, you should be good to go. And just make sure to press enter and it's going to execute it. Then what we want to do is we want to go back to Swagger. So now that we're done with all that, let's go inside of Swagger. Make sure that you're logged in. I can't show you my login, but whenever you put the token in there, just remember that the little lock closes and that means you're authorized. And then what we want to do is go to our portfolio. We want to execute. And what you should see should be the stock that you associated with the user in the database. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.